Do you know how to organize your Premiere Pro workspace? In this video, you'll learn how to move a panel from here to here, or from here to here. Let's get started. As new users to Premiere Pro will become quickly aware, there's a huge amount of information that's available to you on the Premiere Pro desktop. So for example, on this screen, which is on a 4K monitor and allows quite a bit of information to be displayed at one time, you can see that we have a panel here that's showing the project information. It could be showing uh, the effects that are available to you to put onto the, the video um, or much more information concerning how you're doing your editing. And of course, there's also then the program monitor that shows your video as you're creating it. There is the effects control panel that shows all the different effects and keyframes that you're putting onto your video the tools that are available for you to use over here on the left. And of course, most importantly, or perhaps most importantly, the timeline where you have all your clips, all your audio, all your effects and transitions and the elements that you're putting together on your video. And over here at the right hand side, we have the audio meters that display the volume levels as you're playing your video. What you display at any one time depends very much on the stage of editing that you're at. So Premiere provides a number of different preset arrangements of the screens for you to use depending on what stage you're at. So if, for example, you're at the assembly stage, which means that you're pulling together all the clips that you might want to use in your video, then you've got a huge area that is dedicated to the project panel where you can see all of your different clips and a lot of information about them and you can drag those clips onto your timeline. Or it could be that you're at the editing stage, in which case you want to see maybe a larger space for the timeline and you want a lot of space allowed for the effects control panel. What you display on the screen really depends very much on, on where you're at with your editing, but it depends also on the resolution of your screen. So let's just lower the resolution of this a little bit and see the, how that affects what you can display on the screen at any one time. Now I have lowered the resolution of the display just a little bit. It's, it's still not a low resolution display by any means, but you can see that um, all of the text is larger. Everything is showing a little bit larger than it was. All the elements are a little bit larger and therefore you can fit less into the screen at one time. So what we want to do in this video is show you how you can manage all of these panels and panel groups so that you can create and customize the interface just as suits your monitor resolution and suits your workflow the best. Let's move back to one of my standard layouts, the one that I use when I'm working on a single monitor. So that layout is now showing and I like to keep a lot of the panels available to me. Let's just get a little bit of the terminology understood first of all. So the first thing that you have is a set of panel groups. I have clicked on this panel group that's in the top left and you can see that the panel group is outlined by a blue line. And within that panel group, there are a number of different panels that are available to you. And what you have within any panel group is something that you can decide yourself and customize the way that you need it. This is the panel group that contains things like the uh, project panel and the effects panel. I have over here a panel group that can be either the source panel or the program monitor. I have over here panels that contain a lot of the controls that are used. So if we select a clip, then you can see the effect controls for that panel, or you can see the essential graphics, the Lumetri control panel that is here. Um, and I've set it up so that, for example, if I'm using the Lumetri control panel, you can have Lumetri scopes over in another panel so that I can see in real time how adjustments to any of the parameters within Lumetri color affect the histogram over here. Moving on then, we have a panel that shows all the available tools for editing. And we have, of course, the timeline panel that can contain one or more time, one or more sequences uh, in their own timeline. And I also have then the audio meters um, that you can display over here on the right hand side. If you want to rearrange where these panel groups are on the screen, 
you can pick up the panel group by just clicking on the blue line that surrounds it and you could for example move it over to here and resize it and we've now moved the panel group that contains the audio meters over to the right hand side of the screen so you could just drag that back but note when I'm doing this that when I drag it to a particular location you can see that there is a highlighted area that shows where that's going to go if I was to put it here it would go above the panel that has the timeline in it um, if I was to put it um, up here, I'll just drop it there for a moment. You can see that the audio meters go up to that location on the screen. So picking up the outline again and moving it over here to the right hand side where you see that highlighted area, that's where the meters are going to go. It usually divides the available panels into, into two. So we would have to reduce the size of that back down again to something more reasonable. So that's how you move a complete panel group. Within a panel group, you can reposition the available panels just um, as you wish. So for example, we can move them around in any sequence that we want by clicking on the title of the panel and moving it within the menu area of the panel group. So that's how you reorder the panels within a panel group. Supposing you wanted to move a panel to another group. In this case, you can click on the title bar of the panel within the group and you can move it to the menu area in another panel group. And now you can see that we have Lumetri color has gone from this panel group here and it's now in this panel group and we can move it back by just dragging it across onto the menu bar of the original panel group that it was in. If you want to take a panel away from a panel group, if you want to close it, you simply type on the little menu that is at the side of the title of the panel and choose close panel. It's now gone from this particular group and if you want to bring it back, you would go to the window menu and pick Lumetri color from there and it reappears at the end of the menu area. You can drag it across right up to the start of that if you wish or leave it further down. If you want to create a new panel group, then the method is very similar to that of moving panels. You click and drag on the title bar of the panel that you want to move into a new group and you can move it anywhere you want. So you can see that that is now going to move to the right hand side of the program manager and to the left hand side of the panel group that originally contained it. So if I drop it there, you can now see that we now have a new panel group that has only one panel, which is Lumet Recolor. I could take this and drag it to somewhere else on the screen and put it, for example, down here just to the right of the timeline and uh, you know close down the size of it a little bit and now we've got limit recolor down here or alternatively i could click and drag on the title of the panel and move it back up to the menu bar where it was originally and then i might just need to resize the audio meters that you can see here so that allows you to move any panel to another group or create a new group whatever it is that you need to do you can open and close the panels that you want as you need to in order to create the arrangement that works best for you. Now, only one more area to look at in making all of this work easily for you. And that is you can choose any of the standard layouts or you can create your own. So you see, I have created layouts for myself for using on a single monitor, a two monitor layout and, and a curating layout that I find work better for me than the standard layouts that are provided by Adobe. So if I just um, make sure that I'm on the single monitor layout that is mine, I I've made some changes to that as we've been doing this video and I can revert to the saved layout that we originally had for this. So that's a, a useful thing to be able to do. And what you can also do is if you have made changes, you can update that particular workspace 
with the changes that you've made or you can save those changes as a new workspace and that's how I created the single monitor, the two monitor and the curating workspaces for myself. And finally, if you want to change which ones that you see on the menu and which ones you don't see, if you want to delete some of the ones that are there so that they don't appear in your list because you're never going to use them, then you can either move them to the area where they will not show on the list or you can delete them all together. So if I click on single monitor, I could delete that from my list of workspaces and it will no longer appear. You can change the order of them as you wish, so you can just drop them and drag them wherever you want. So that shows you how to set up and save your layouts. If you make a mistake, you can usually go back um, to reset to saved layout and it will, it will revert all your layouts and all your panels back to the way in which they were the last time that you looked at them. Now I want to say one more thing before finally closing and that is particularly useful that you can have more than one sequence showing in the timeline panel. So I have this sequence with the red arrows showing here. If I wanted to uh, open another sequence I can just simply double click it and now you see that I've got a slightly different sequence that is there. If I wanted to have them both in the timeline panel at the same time I could pick this red arrows panel and I could drag that and move up until I'm seeing that it is showing just above the other one and let go and now that panel has created a new group and it is the, a group that is just above the other panel that was previously displaying so you now have two groups for your timeline panel so I hope that makes sense to you the real benefit of this is that you can drag clips from one panel onto the other one I can just drag that clip down and overwrite what was on the previous panel below. I can type Control Z, get it back to the way it was, or I can drag it down and hold down Control and, and move it to wherever we want, and it will um, it will insert there, as you can see. So to close down that extra timeline panel group, I could just simply click on the little X that is beside the panel, and we're now back to one panel group for the the timeline that has one sequence within it. If I were to double click this sequence you would see that it now opens within the same panel group and I now have two panels. Each one has a sequence within it within the one panel group. I could take um, either of them, take the red arrows one for example and we could drop it in below the other panel group. So that's just a summary of how that works and then close down whichever one you no longer need to use. So I hope that's been clear and if you find it useful Please give the video a like and subscribe to the Video Darkroom. Thank you for watching.